What's up, everybody? It's Eric Armstead, and welcome to another episode of Third and Long. Man, it's going to be an exciting episode, because I got time today. It's Friday. I got nine days before we got another game, and we got a lot to discuss from this week. Thursday night football. Levi's was rocking. And there was a lot of traffic getting to the game. I don't think Santa Clara was prepared for Thursday night. Um, I was stuck in traffic riding to the game. I was didn't know if I was going to make it in time. I like to get to the stadium about three hours before kickoff. You know, have my, my routine, get my body right, get my mind right. And I'm sitting in traffic like, dang, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Fans start noticing me. I'm in traffic with fans. They tell me to roll down my window. I'm like, dang, what's up? How y'all doing? Um, having conversations, sitting in traffic with fans. And that's when I knew it was going to be a special night because the, the city was buzzing. Um, and you can you definitely tell once I entered that stadium that it was buzzing. Um, fans were loud. Uh, the stars were out, you know, uh, a lot of celebrities at the game. So it was a fun game to be a part of Thursday night, the only show in the world. Everybody's watching. So it was a lot of fun. And it was a great way to start our home opener at Levi's. And uh, we definitely wanted to deliver a dub for our fans uh, at home. You guys support us so much. And uh, we wanted to put on a show for you guys and put on a show in front of the world. And I definitely think we did that Thursday night. Funny story. I'm um, sitting in traffic, trying to get to the stadium. And man, I'm so hydrated. I've been drinking water and electrolytes all day. And, uh, I, you know, I left, I left my house. And I'm like, I got time. I got time to, to, to make it to the stadium. You know, I'm real hydrated. But as I'm sitting in traffic, I'm like, dang I got to use the bathroom. Like, and then now I'm sitting in traffic and I'm kind of stuck. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Man, I had to pull over to the side of the road before I made it to the stadium. So that's how my, that's how my game day started, was uh, not knowing if I was going to pee on myself, to be honest with you. But I didn't. I made it to the side of the road. And uh, then, I, then I kept going on to the stadium. Uh, and I'm, I'm Definitely glad I, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely glad I didn't, didn't have that, have that accident. Um, especially my nice clothes, man. You know, I, I, I dressed up for prior time, you know, um, I think I was looking, looking pretty, pretty good. And that would have just ruined, ruined my whole evening if that would have happened to me, man. But fortunately I was able to pull off to the side of the road and, uh, it was cool. Things got chippy in this game. I know you guys might have saw Trent getting into it with, uh, you know, their defense alignment, Ashawn Robinson. And there's a lot of backstory to that one uh, that I think people don't know. Ashawn used to play for the Rams, obviously. And, uh, you know, so that, that kind of beef and that, that chippiness, you know, starting years back, between him and Trent, and they've been getting into it for a few years now. And uh, so that's what you guys saw on Thursday night, really. That was uh, years and years of back and forth and them getting into it already, and then it just, you know, comes out uh, once you play the, the guy again and it never gets settled. So, um, yeah, uh, I got a lot of friends over there on the Giants, especially on the D-line. My guy, Dexon Lawrence and Leonard Williams. Two excellent, great players, man. And, uh, you know, I know I knew what was going to be, you know, on their plate. Um, I watched our offense so much. I've seen them do it to so many uh, defenses. And, um, you know, I know that, that they weren't going to back down as well. They have a great D-line. Um, and, they, you know, that can lead to the things getting chippy out there, man. We play a grown man sport. Things happen. You get into it. Um, and you know, you, you settle it, handle it like a man, you know, in this sport. So that's what happened out there. Um, uh, you know, also 
if you weren't aware, during our NFC Championship game last year, Kayvon Thibodeau got on Twitter, and he said that the way this game is looking when we were playing the Eagles, that they might be better than the 49ers with crying, laughing faces. And, you know, after the NFC Championship game, you know, I get on Twitter, I see that. I'm like, that would be bad, man. Like, I watched y'all film. And uh, to be honest with you, I was disgusted. I actually had to turn it off so I wouldn't be demoralized uh, before playing the Eagles and thinking, like, dang, there's no way we're going to beat these dudes. So it was really bad. And, uh, you know, I, so I didn't really like all, I didn't really like all that. Um, and so, you know, I said, you know, don't do that. Like, I, I seen how y'all did versus the Eagles too, man. And what a better opportunity to play against the Giants now the following year. And uh, I know everyone saw the result of that. You know, there's no beef between uh, me and Thibodeau, obviously. You know, we both went to Oregon. Uh, I see him as like a little homie of mine, um, you know, and it's, it's just a little back and forth talking, uh, you know, but I had to, I had to, I had to set that straight. Like, man, don't do that. Like we, we, we can see what's going on in, in these games. You know, the games are recorded for a reason. Uh, there's film. The eye of the sky don't lie. The eye of the sky don't lie. Now getting into the game. Uh, first start with the offense. Another great performance by our offense. Um, you know, offense really had a lot of long drives, uh, which wear down on the defense. Um, Debo, Debo, Ooh. Debo went crazy. Six catches, 129 yards, big tug. Um, man, Debo is a unicorn. There's nothing like him in this league. He's a once in a generation type player. Uh, he's so rare. He is the true yak king. I mean, he's so hard to tackle. He's like a little bowling ball out there. He's been that way his entire life. That's how he got his nickname, Debo, was being a little bowling ball <laughs> since birth, man. He was just born to play football, um, and he's a true gamer. Get the ball in his hands, and he's going to make magic happen. Uh, really, watching him play is an inspiration to us because I feel like he really – treats offense like he's a defensive player. I feel like he's one of us sometimes, man, the way he delivers punishment out there uh, when people try to tackle him. Uh, his mentality to keep going, always fight for extra yards. It's truly inspirational for us as a defense. I know when we're on the sideline watching it, man, we get fired up. We get uh, excited because, like, dang. Sometimes we wish we could go out there and do that. You know, all defensive players have a little – have a little bit of, dang, I wish I could play offense. And uh, I think Debo brings that mentality to the offense. And, uh, man, we love to see it and it inspires us. You know, when he's running people over, it makes us fired up to go out there and want to want to hit somebody too and uh, make the crowd go crazy. So Debo is a one-of-a-kind player, one in a generation. He's a true unicorn. Haven't seen nothing like him uh, in this league. Ronnie Bell really stepped up in the absence of Brandon Ayuk. Um, caught his first career touchdown in prime time. Huge catch. Uh, huge catch in the corner of the end zone. Man, that was a big play. That really shifted the momentum of the game. And uh, Ronnie's a gamer. You know, I think we saw that in the preseason. I talked about it early in the year. His training camp that he had, he really uh, opened up a lot of eyes and made the team, made the 53. Um, and that was without question because of what he did in practice and what he did in those preseason games. And for him to have his moment in uh, a primetime game and scores for a touchdown, man, that was awesome to see. Uh, he's a tremendous player, and I know he's going to continue to get better and better each week. To the defensive side of the ball, talked about this before, and I'll say it again and again. Each week, I'm going to look at the rushing yards total for the team. And if it's under 70, I think we won the game. I would bet we won the game. Giants had 29 yards rushing, which is outstanding. Um, really, we turned them into a one-dimensional team. You know, I think they 
we had a, a early game plan of uh, gap scheme runs, which were the whams, the traps, uh, try to take advantage of our defensive line who we like to penetrate, get off the ball, get vertical. And uh, they try to use that to our, you know, our disadvantage by whamming and trapping us and getting us up the field um, and, and misdirection runs. And uh, it started off early. You know, they had little success, not much. Um, we really expected to see more QB uh, runs with Daniel Jones, and, you know, we didn't get too many of those. And so after we, you know, stopped that run, uh, we can have some fun. And uh, we turned them into a one-dimensional team, which was just a lot of drop-back passes. And then that's when we get to have a lot of fun, pin our ears back as deep as a line, and go put pressure on this dude. Um, and that's what we did, man. We had three guys with over, with over a 91-grade pass rush, Nick, Hargrave, and myself. Um, we were back there a lot. And I really want to highlight Javon Kinlaw. My little homie has been balling, man. He's fourth in the league amongst defensive tackles for pressures with 10 this season. Man, he's been stopping the run. He's been rushing the passer. He's been playing phenomenal. Um, and I really want to talk about, you know, our relationship. You know, when JK came as a rookie. Um, I felt like it was my responsibility to you know, pour everything I had into him and, and all the knowledge and everything that uh, I've been through in this league, you know, that was my responsibility to uh, be, his, be his big homie and, um, you know, try to show him the way. And our, our relationship has completely transformed, you know, throughout these years into um, motivating one another, um, being in inspiration to one another. You know, JK has always inspired me to, to get the best out of me. And I'm always inspiring him to get the best out of him. And it's been a great relationship. I love playing with this dude. Uh, I'm so excited to see uh, his success this year, man. And I knew, you know, all along is just a matter, a matter of time. You know, I've dealt with a lot of injuries early in my career. And um, I know that how tough it is to, to get better when you're not getting those reps. And man, JK is healthy. And it's showing, he's showing up each game. Um, he, he brings his, his physicality, his, uh, his demeanor um, to our D-line. He, he has a new element. You know, me, Hargrave, Bose, you know, we're kind of reserved, quiet dudes. We go out there and do our business. But J.K. is bringing uh, a different type of mentality to our D-line, man. And um, you need those personalities uh, we all mesh so well, and you need everyone to to be themselves and go out there and and bring to the game and bring to the group what they bring. You know, we all bring something different. We're all, you know, different, unique players. Um, and all of us together, you know, it's tough to stop. So, man, I'm proud of my proud of my little homie, man. Um, he's been balling, and uh, he's going to continue to have a great year um, because he's a great player. He works extremely hard, and uh, I'm excited to, excited to see uh, the rest of this year. We really have a third starting defensive tackle. You know, um, J.K. Is, is not a backup. He can start on a lot of teams um, around this league. And uh, so bringing him in um, to, to, to go after these, these offensive lines when, you know, after me and Hargrave, um, you know, already wearing him out, man. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough on these Dominson lines. And he's going to continue to be dominant. Um, you know, he's in a contract year. I'm so excited for him um, and, and what this year is going to look like for him. It's going to be life-changing, man. Always talk about our turnovers. Huh? Kyle Lufanga is an interception machine. The, the, the ball just, just finds this man. Um, you know, he did it last year. Uh, first team all pro as safety and he's having another all pro season um, because he gets the ball out of the air, his ball skills, uh, forcing turnovers, um, getting interceptions is, is the, is what makes him him, man. This, this guy's a ball hawk. Uh, he has a knack for getting the ball out the air 
And uh, it just seems like the he has like mag like magnets on his hands, and when the ball's in the air, it's just and so um, those plays are huge for us. You know, they're they're momentum changing. Uh, like I said, turnover the turnover battle is key in wins and losses. And Huff is on his way to having another All Pro year. Uh, this man is a ball hawk. Uh, he flies around, makes plays, and his ball skills are exceptional. Thursday night football was a lot of fun. I really like. Their, their crew and their cast, you know, especially uh, my good friend, Richard Sherman. Uh, it was fun seeing him on the sideline and doing his thing and uh, talking to him before the game. Uh, really, really proud of him and everything he's doing with his career um, after, the, after the game of football. Uh, and it was really fun to see him. I think they have a great, a great crew, you know, with, Whitworth is a cool guy. His Patrick is dope, um, and the whole and the whole the whole gang is 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 pretty awesome. And they they make they make the game fun. You know they make the game entertaining, and uh, it was really cool to 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 see this new kind of regime of Thursday night football. And it, and it made it made the experience uh, much better too. Um, you know when you have who when you have people who who uh, are really exciting and it really entertaining and it really know the game and really um, can, can speak to, you know, really what's going on out there. Uh, so it was great to see uh, Uncle Sherm, my, my big homie. Uh, I learned so much from him. And um, it was great, you know, being a part of, of Thursday Night Football and this cast and this crew is, uh, is uh, really awesome. I told you guys I would be teaching you the game and bringing you closer to the game and offering a new perspective. So I'm excited to announce this new segment of the show, which I call Self Scout, where we'll be watching a film together and breaking down some plays from the game. So let's get into it. The first play I want to break down is play 24 of the game. It's third and three. This is right before the half, and the Giants are moving the ball, trying to get a field goal or a score before the half. So this is a, this is what we call a two minute situation. They're they're on the ball, uh, not much time left before the half, and they're trying to get a score. So we're in our two minute mode. Uh, it's going to be all passes because if they run the ball, they're going to waste time. So here's a third and three play where we have to get off the field, and we're in our um we're in our mug look. Where as you can see, Fred is standing over the center. I'm in a left three, Hargrave in a right three, Nick's over there at right end, and we have Drake over here at left end. So right here, we have a five-man pass rush. Um, we're rushing five, and the reason you want to rush five is because that's how you get one-on-ones. Now, if you rush four, then somebody's going to get doubled. They could have chippers, um, which now you have a defensive end getting chipped and the inside get guys getting doubled. So when you rush five, you know, you're trying to create one-on-ones for each, each guy who's rushing. So right here, uh, they have five offensive linemen protecting. And so everybody, everybody has a one-on-one. And right here, I talked to you guys last week about how I didn't feel like I had my best pass rush game uh, against the Rams. And so my main focus this week, uh, on a short week, was to study my opponent, come up with my plan of how I want to beat them, and then go execute. And this play right here was one of my better rushes from the game. Um, and my plan was to work this guy's outside half. Um, I saw a weakness in his lower half to handle um, edge rushes. Um, you know, I don't know what happened, you know, his, his history, but he has a big knee brace on. And I just saw, like, that he wouldn't be able to hold up if I was to attack his edges. And so right here, I go with a move I call a jab swipe in which I'm jabbing my inside foot to get him to stop, and I want him to shoot his hands. And when he shoots his hands, I want to have my hands ready and swipe his arms 
uh, off, off of my body. And so right here was a good, good rush, a clean rush. And boom. The quick win. I mean, Daniel Jones face immediately. And we go to Nick too. Take a look at Nick on this play. He goes one. He has his outside foot back. One step, two step, three step. And on his third step, he has a similar plan as me. Boom, swipe inside. So I swiped outside. Nick swiped inside. We both went clean. And Daniel Jones has to get rid of the ball. And it's not in the timing of the, not in the timing of the, the route concept. And it's an incomplete pass. So this was big because we made them kick an extra long field goal. You know, if they would have got some more yards, it would have been an easier field goal. The guy ended up making a, a pretty tough kick, but that's all you can ask for in this situation is, is make it hard on them. And uh, the kicker ended up making a, a good kick to, to score points for the half. The next play I want to break down, not much has happened on this play, but I want to break it down for you guys. So if you guys know some of the terminology I use when I'm talking about football, and you guys can use some of that terminology as well. And uh, the Giants are, have the ball. They're on the 46-yard line. And they're going to run a play, which we call wham. So wham play is you want to invite the D-line up the field. This is a, a play that a lot of teams like to run versus our front because we're an attacking front. This play won't work versus a read scheme or guys who um, stay on the line of scrimmage. We like to create a new line of scrimmage. And so the, the, the object of this play is to invite me up the field and they're going to have this tight end come and win. So they want me to fire off, get up the field, and the tight end come hit me on the side. And then the guard pull and... Hargraves is, you know, flying up the field. Um, they hit him as well, too. So that's the design of the play. When I'm getting off the ball, something felt a little funky. Like the guy was just, just threw one hand and was just sitting there. And so um, it was a little confusing. Um, you know, I didn't play this play great. It wasn't terrible. I mean, I didn't go way up the field and create a huge running lane. You know, I kind of held, held space in there to make it a little tighter. What I want to point out right here is Nick did an amazing job. Um, and this is what we call setting the edge. As defensive end, if you want to play in our scheme, you need to be physical and you need to be able to set the edge. And if you don't, then you're compromising the defense. And when you allow the running back to get out on the edge, now everybody else can't do their job. We can't do our job inside. Uh, the linebackers have to overrun. Um, they can't play how they need to play, which is patient because it's a play-action game and they have coverage and they can't play patient and in inside out. And so Nick right here does an excellent job, you know, versus a, a big offensive tackle who um, is – head over heels, doing everything he can to uh, knock Nick to the sideline and create space for that running back. Nick sets the edge, and he's able to, this is what we call gap and a half, right? Nick's responsibility is to set the edge. But what we always look for is doing your job and doing more. We want to be playmakers. And so once you set the edge, using your inside arm, boom, coming off and making the play too, that's what we call gap and a half. You're playing the C gap and the B gap. You set the S and you made the play, which is a phenomenal job by Nick. And um, Nick, you know, everybody knows his passer's ability, but he also uh, does a great job in the run game. So this was huge right here. Um, like I said, this was a, a honestly a, a go-to play for them. Um, and it's really supposed to get a lot more yards uh, than than this, but Nick doing such a good job on it. Really, you know, kind of uh, got them to shy away from it a little bit. They came back to it um, in the red zone, and that's how they scored their 
their um I saw they scored their touchdown. Um Matt Rita scored on the way of play. So they ran it twice, but this was obviously, you know, a big part of the game plan. And uh this is how it's supposed to look though. This is this is really uh locking it down and, and Nick did a great job right here. Next play I want to break down. Play 29. The Giants have the ball on the 43. And it's third and seven. So third and seven, obviously it's a passing situation. Third and seven, we call that third and long, which is the situation we want to be in, um, which is why I named my show Third and Long. And so this is, this is where we want to be. You know, it could be third and seven, third and eight, third and 12, the entire game team. You know, being a deep slotman would be the best thing in the world. Um, so right here, we're in our um, Cinco package where we brought J.K. Kinlaw into the game. So now we have five defense in line. You saw earlier we had five-man pressure um, with four defense in linemen and Fred being the fifth rusher. But now we have five trained pass rushers. And you can see on this play how dangerous that, that can be. Um, so the, the, the goal of this play is to create a 5-0. Everybody get one-on-ones. Everybody wins. You went quick, quarterback should go down. So right here, uh, the Giants are in their chippers look. So let me explain chippers to you guys. So you see number zero out here. He's chipping Drake, our left defensive end. Now, when people say like, oh, they're, they're chipping, like the guys inside should, should eat, should have one-on-ones, that's not how it works, right? So when there's a chipper, the offensive lineman, the offensive tackle, now can help on the inside guy. So, right? So that's what we call a hand drag. Uh, the offensive lineman can hand drag three technique, so you can help on him a little bit before he gets out to the defensive end because the defensive end is getting chipped and he's going to be slowed down. So that's what they have right here. Uh, Nick is getting chipped. Drake is getting chipped. But being in our 5-0 pressure, we're still able to create one-on-one and right here, we have Hargrave, who really started off this play, winning his one-on-one -on, -one on the center with the nice, man, Hargrave has a unique ability to, to jump up out of his stance and uh, jab a guy and, and win the edge at a high rate. Right here, boom, jumps out of the stance, boom, swipes that arm off, and he's, he's gone. Hargrave's too good. So he, he creates the initial pressure. And right there, what we would like is for our defensive ends in this position to get outside of the chippers to create an edge. Because you can see right here, Hargrave wins quick, boom. Now Daniel Jones, because we didn't get outside the chippers, he, has our, he, he can just take off, you know, retreat, and try to run out the pocket. Um, so next time we'll have Drake outside of that chipper and have a have an edge. And right here, now it's just scramble drill. And he comes over to me. I'm hoping he holds on to the ball. And I'm chasing him, I'm chasing him, I'm chasing him. He throws it. I'm still gonna get a hit on him, knock him out of balance. You know, those hits add up. You know, when you start hitting them consistently throughout a game, it takes a toll on the quarterback. So this is what I think we'll get into a lot more. It's having five defensive linemen out there. JK is playing at extremely high level. So having him on the field and creating more one-on-ones for us up front is, should, do, should do a lot of damage um, for offenses. That's a wrap.
for another episode of Third and Long. Uh, this show is all about you guys and bringing the fans closer to the game. So if there's things that you guys want me to discuss, if there's things you guys want me to break down on film, please let me know in the comments. Appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in another episode of Third and Long.